This video is sponsored by War Thunder. An aircraft carrier is essentially a floating city centered around a high-intensity airport. It can launch fully loaded fighter jets in under two seconds, but it can also be extremely dangerous. One wrong move, and you're caught in a deadly game of extreme jump rope. Ever wonder why the E-2 Hawkeye is always the first aircraft launched at the start of the cycle? Or why naval aircraft have folding wings instead of just being built smaller? What about why the Navy removed the built-in gun from the F-35C? And why some maritime aircraft routinely shut off one of their engines mid-flight? The answer isn't what you think. At first glance, naval aircraft appear similar to their Air Force counterparts. But the immense stress from catapult launches and arrested landings means the Navy requires specialized variants. These carrier-capable aircraft have reinforced components and typically feature longer wings, which generate additional lift to compensate for the significantly shorter runway, just 300 feet on a carrier compared to 6,000 feet on land. Because aircraft carriers have limited space, those longer wings need to be foldable for more efficient storage and handling. The E-2 Hawkeye serves as an airborne radar system, but why is it necessary when ships in a carrier strike group already have state-of-the-art radar, like the and slash spy one? The answer lies in the curvature of the Earth. A person at sea level can see less than three miles to the horizon, while someone standing atop Mount Everest could see nearly 200 miles under clear conditions. The same principle applies to radar. When the E-2 Hawkeye flies at 30,000 feet, its radar can detect threats over 200 miles away and relay that data to the carrier strike group in real time. Early detection is critical, giving commanders those crucial extra seconds to make informed decisions and neutralize threats. The E-2 can track up to 300 low and high altitude targets, including aircraft, ships, and missiles within its surveillance volume of over 3 million cubic miles, earning it the title of the eyes of the fleet. You might assume the E-2 is launched first to provide early situational awareness before other aircraft take off, but the real reason is more practical. The E-2 is large and cumbersome, and handlers prefer to clear from the flight deck before operations get too hectic. Another factor is that the E-2 lacks an auxiliary power unit, APU, which means it must be plugged into an external power source while parked. Since only a few spots on the flight deck can provide this, the E-2 is catapulted first and recovered last to minimize logistical complications. Recovering the E-2 has its own challenges. There have been instances where arresting wires malfunctioned, leading to close calls. However, skilled pilots and the twin turboprop engines of the E-2 have prevented potential disasters, turning them into a moment of pride for flight crew aboard carriers like the USS Eisenhower. Interestingly, if the Hawkeye's radome is damaged, it can be removed, allowing the aircraft to fly topless. Since the dome is mounted at the plane's center of gravity, its removal doesn't affect flight performance. Despite their power, aircraft carriers face their greatest threats from below, not above. A torpedo from a submarine can be devastating, as the ability to sneak up on a carrier minimizes response time. This is where the MH-60 Seahawk helicopter plays a crucial role. Though it flies in the air, it can detect submarines hidden beneath the surface using sauna buoys, specialized sensors dropped into the water to pick up underwater sounds. Some sauna buoys are highly advanced, deploying antennas and receivers after hitting the water. Beyond the carrier, maritime patrol aircraft like the P-8 Poseidon scan the seas for submarines. The P-8, unlike carrier-based aircraft, operates from land but boasts a combat range of 1,200 nautical miles. Similar to its predecessor, the P-3 Orion, it can deploy sauna buoys to detect enemy submarines and engage them with torpedoes and harpoon missiles. Interestingly, the P-3 Orion often patrol when its four engines shut off to conserve fuel, enabling long-range missions lasting over 10 hours. Aircraft carriers primarily exist to launch attack missions, not engage in dogfights. Their main strike force consists of F divided by minus 18E and F Super Hornets and F-35C Lightning Twos. Between the two, the F-35C stands out with 770 mile combat range, almost double the F-18's 448 miles. This is thanks to its powerful Pratt and Whitney F-135 engine, the most powerful engine ever installed in a fighter jet. If you want to experience the thrill of air, sea, and land combat firsthand, 
War Thunder is the game for you. With highly detailed vehicle damage models, realistic physics, and an immersive combat experience, it offers one of the best military simulations available. Whether you're piloting aircraft, commanding ships, or operating tanks, every vehicle in War Thunder is modeled with extreme precision. The X-ray view allows you to see exactly which components are damaged after every hit, giving you a strategic advantage in battle. Join over 70 million players on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation and engage in epic PvP battles. And if you're new or haven't played in six months, you'll receive a limited time bonus package, including multiple premium vehicles, an exclusive vehicle decorator, 100,000 silver lines, and seven days of a premium account. Click the link below to play War Thunder for free.